Hey everybody, Thomas Joseph here, and today I am super excited to share with you one question that you have been asking about, and that is how to create a cheese plate or a cheese spread. In front of me here, I have six different cheeses, but the reality is, is that you really only need three to five cheeses, depending on the size of your crowd. Now, if you're having about six to eight people over for some wine and cheese, you really only need three different cheeses. If you, in fact, are having more guests, then maybe you should go up to five. So in front of me here, I have a few examples of cheeses that have different tastes and textures and formats. Today, I'm focusing in on French cheeses, but this is the beauty of a cheese platter, you can really customize it to your taste. So if you wanna do a cheese spread that is all focused around French cheeses, go ahead. You could do Italian, you could do a mix. It really depends on what you like. In front of me here, one cheese that you should really have on your cheese platter is a fresh cheese, and that is this guy here. This is a Chev. So this is a fresh goat cheese. Now you could substitute this with mozzarella or burrata if you would like, if you're going the Italian route. But having a fresh cheese, something with a really soft texture that's easily spreadable, is a nice thing to offer guests. Now, in addition to this fresh cheese, kind of going up the aging cycle of cheeses, I have soft rind cheeses. And soft rind cheeses are fresh cheeses that are aged slightly, anywhere from two to 10 to even 12 months, depending on the cheese. And and these two that I have in front of me, this is a Boucheron, a French cheese, and this is a La Chevrotte, and part of my French, if I'm not pronouncing them exactly right. But these have a nice soft rind to them, meaning that you could eat the rind. And what you should really do with these cheeses is give an entry point to them for your guests. Make your cheese plate less intimidating so that people feel comfortable breaking into the cheese eating it and it's not just there for a beautiful picture so the chevrot here which it's a little kind of round of cheese if you cut this into wedges and fan it out slightly just so that people know how they should be cutting it it's a great way for people to break into the cheese now this boucheron i've cut into circles so people can easily access it as well and if you can't find these varieties an example that you might be more familiar with is a brie or a camembert those would be acceptable soft rinded cheeses now moving down the line towards more aged cheeses i have a gruyere cheese which gruyere cheese it's popular in a lot of recipes but it's also really delicious to eat by itself it has a nice saltiness to it and it is a semi hard or semi-firm cheese, meaning that it has been aged and is much firmer in texture than our soft rinded cheeses, but it's still pretty soft and easy to cut. Now, I would suggest that you shave off pieces of this Gruyere for guests to take little slivers because it is pretty salty and nice thin pieces are going to go a long way for your guests. So if you couldn't find Gruyere at your supermarket or at your cheese shop, um, some other varieties of cheese that would fit this category would be the cheddars. Now, a hard or aged cheese that I have over here, this is a mimolette, and it's a French cheese that is actually colored with annatto seeds, so that's how it gets its signature orange color. It's very hard and firm. Now, you could replace this with a Parmesan or a Pecorino, something that's really salty, and you really want to kind of chip away pieces of this cheese for your guests. And I like to do, just do it in more of a natural way, kind of chipping it off with the, the knife. Now, if you have some of those fancy cheese knives in your gadget drawer, that would be certainly acceptable here, but just kind of break into it slightly and then leave the knife right next to it so that people will engage with the cheese and, and continue to cut it off. Now, if you're really into cheese and you're really into fragrance and texture, I would suggest that you also place on your cheese plate a blue cheese. And this is a Roquefort, which is a French blue, but there's Gorgonzola, there's Maytag blue cheese, there's a lot of English blue cheese that's really fantastic. When you're presenting your cheese plate, you want to make sure that you pull all of the cheese out of the refrigerator and let it come to room temperature. And that's going to take about an hour, maybe a little bit over that. And that's when the flavors of the cheese will really be kind of free and you'll be able to taste them best. So now in addition to cheese, which should be the focal point of your cheese plate, it's also nice to have some accompaniments to go along with it. Now, I think that fruit really does pair well with cheese because again, cheeses are, for the most part, 
salty, so having something sweet to go alongside is really great. Of course, you know, grapes are kind of classic. Now, it depends on the season that you have, but go with seasonal fruits. Right now here in New York, we have these beautiful figs. These are mission figs. They're nice and jammy on the inside. And again, with the fruit, you wanna make it easy for people to eat. So cut a few open. You can leave a few whole. Stone fruits are also really great um, on a cheese plate. I have some of these beautiful red plums here. And I just like to cut these into wedges so that people can kind of take a small bite of cheese and have a little bit of fruit to go along with it. But again, guys, it's really up to you and what you prefer. If you have a preference for certain fruits, then you know what, put it on your cheese board. But always remember, you know, color, taste, texture, all of those things. Think of a mix of things that you can pull together so that there are options and variety for people. In addition to fresh fruits, dried fruits are also really great. Again, that sweetness really helps to complement the saltiness of the cheese. So I'm using dried dates here today, but you could also use dried apricots. That would be really fantastic. In addition to fruits for sweetness, you could also use honey. That would be really fantastic. There are lots of different varieties of honey. Um, that would be really great, or honeycomb. Nuts are also a fantastic addition to a cheese plate because you have a texture that's being introduced, which is really good as well. Now, last but not least, we all need some carbs, and what I would suggest if you are pairing crackers and or bread with your cheese, um, that you avoid anything with a really strong flavor because you don't want to take away from the nuanced flavors of the cheeses. So try to avoid things that are heavy in garlic or rosemary, or onion, a lot of the flavored crackers go for something that has a mild flavor or is almost flavorless, maybe just like a buttery flavor. And I have some simple plain crackers here. And then I always like to serve bread with my cheese plates because I really enjoy the texture and the chew of breads. Again, mixing up the textures is really what you're looking for here. And I always like to break the bread into small pieces instead of cutting it. I think it gives just a better look and feel to your cheese plate. And you know what, leave some pieces whole. Let people get their hands in here and really let them partake in the spread. Now, if you have any leftover cheese once your guests have gone, the best way to store cheese is in parchment paper. So wrap your cheese up in parchment paper and then loosely cover it in plastic wrap. You want to make sure that your cheeses aren't drying out. So the plastic wrap really helps, but you don't want to wrap it up too tight where there's excess moisture or condensation that's created because that will arm your cheeses. It will encourage it to rot. So there you go, guys. I hope I've helped you out in that conundrum of creating your cheese plate. Now, if you have any kitchen conundrums, write in the comment section below. We always love hearing from you guys and enjoy. Hey everybody, Thomas Joseph here from Kitchen Conundrums. Now, if you want to see more videos like this, click here to see more videos or click here to subscribe.